Hi, everybody. I just want to welcome you all to our Surrey School District Mental Health and Wellness channel. Today, we have a very special presentation for all of you. Um, we have some student artwork about mental health and wellness from Tamanois Secondary, as well as we're going to have a poetry reading from a student at Earl Marriott Secondary. Um, as we know, um, and, and to me, poetry is a very um, important part as well as art of expressing ourselves, uh, mental health and wellness. As a former English teacher and as a connoisseur of art, um, I think the, the student expressions in this way are, are so key in helping um, kids be well and helping all of us um, be well during these very um, perilous times of the COVID-19 pandemic. And as things get better, um, self-expression and, and, and really looking deep into one's own soul in an artistic way, whether it would be with art or with poetry, is so, so important. We're so glad to highlight student work during this time to, to be able to, to highlight that. So today we have Anjali Kanda from Earl Marriott Secondary. She is the overall poetry contest winner for 2021. And I actually was a former teacher at Earl Marriott, an English teacher, athletic director, I taught business ed, but the poetry contest was so near and dear to my heart because again, poetry as a former English teacher really is a way of expressing oneself, one's own soul, uh, one's own feelings in a, in a way that can reach a, a mass audience. And it's, it's so great. Thank you so much for agreeing to, to be on camera with us today, Anjali. It's not um, an easy thing to do. I do it all the time. So it feels easy to me, but I know for everybody um, speaking to people on YouTube it is not easy. So thank you so much for coming on. Um, today. Oh, no problem. So I'm going to ask you a question first before we ask you to read your four poems that won the contest. Uh, what sparks your creativity and having that expressed in poetry? Why why poetry? Why is that something that's near and dear to you? Um, I think something special about poetry is that there's sort of like no rules. Mm. So you can write however you want and whatever you want. And it's right because poetry can never be wrong. Yeah. And I think that's a really cool thing of just kind of almost turning off your brain, like turning off the critical part of your brain and just totally being creative. Okay. And what is, uh, before you read your poems, are you going to tell us a little bit about them or are you just going to read them? Or what would you like to do today for that? Well, I can talk a little bit about it. Okay. Um, so I, the poem... No, no, I was, actually, before you do that, I'm going to turn it all over to you. I'm going to turn myself off so you okay. are the primary focus of what's happening today. So go for it. Talk about your poems. Read through them. The time is yours. Okay. So the overall anthology is called A Study in Divinity. And I was kind of, I guess, inspired by divinity, if that makes sense. Um, so I'll just read each individual poem and then maybe explain a little bit about it. But this is the first one. It's called uh, Men and Mazine. So here we go. Do the gods listen? The tile is cold against my cheek, cold against my arm, cold against my body, cold. Freezing from where I lay, staring into the abyss, the darkness, the hollow grave, beckoning my name, the black. A void under my bed, filled with something, laughter, tears, pain, monsters past, that I reach towards, that I crave. Do the gods hear me when I call them out by name? Dear Thanatos, dear Nyx, dear Ares, you creatures of death and night and war, when will you take me in your loving arms? And they reply, try to wrap your arms around a memory. Does it keep you warm? That's the first one. Um, the thing with my poetry is, like I said before, it's totally just like creative self-expression. It's not so much like, like I don't really put much critical thought into it. So with that one, I don't even know. I just kind of come up with general concepts or ideas and then go with it. And I just kind of write these different phrases or little metaphors that I think would work. And I think that poem is a good example of me just kind of thinking of concepts and then writing it out. Uh, the second one is called Runaway. One, the trees around you blur against a setting sky. Darkness with its trembling arms reaching forward to cradle you like a child of the night a child of the infinite, a child of the unseen. There is no light, but there is sound, loud and consuming and beating wildly like the call of a heart. Two, your clothes are white, purer than the flesh powder of a Russian winter that falls to the ground to commence a season of isolation in early evenings. 
The cold stars watch you more than the brilliant sun. And even as your eyes shut and desolation surrounds you, there's creeping knowledge that trails along your spine, informing you that you are not as alone as you may think. Three, blood drips from your lips like honey, sweet and sticky and addicting. You bare your teeth like a panther and all your enemies see before you, they are devoured, are sharp points tainted red with war and time. You have made the trees your towers and the dirt your floor of marble. Four, you see the white flash before your eyes, a pristine cut of cloth becoming tainted with nature. You can smell the fear. You can hear their heart creating an uncertain rhythm. The sun disappears over the horizon and with a background of dying stars, you watch them sleep. You wait. Um, so that one, the way it was formatted was something that was very popular on Pinterest actually, where you choose a word. So I chose runaway and then you kind of write four parts or like four sort of descriptions about it. So that was, I guess, my take on a somewhat popular trend. Number three is called 1486. Lady Venus of the clamshell, will you sing for me? Your siren voice, your ocean call, a sickly sweet syrup sliding slowly down my throat, coating my lungs, covering my heart. Lady Venus, will you give me a gift? Give me eternity and give me love, but do not tempt me with clandestine freedom, with illicit hearts that do not beat for me. Oh, Lady Venus, do you hear my cries? Do you hear my call? Do not let me be ensnared by the pink matter. Do not let me be nothing but a cage. Oh, Lady Venus, oh, Lady Venus, you are wrapped in blue silk and fine pearls. Can you spare a poor woman a bead of the sea? I would like to hold it in my palms and press it against my face, taste the salt as I taste sweet candies, and let it harden my teeth until I can take bites from unsuspecting sailors like you. Oh, Lady Venus, please be kind. My heart aches in shades of red and pink. I am one breath, one step, one life away from soft skin and fine china, green grass and blue skies. Oh, Lady Venus, Lady Venus, do you hear my cries? Let me go, Lady Venus, let me go. I no longer crave this life. So that one was inspired by the painting, The Birth of Venus, and it was painted around 1486, hence the title. So I just kind of saw that painting and then kind of had this whole, I guess, imagery or just idea concept. And again, I ran with it. And so that was the result of that poem. And then the final one, which is maybe one of my personal favorites is called Pomegranate Juice. Does divinity stain your lips like pomegranate juice? Are your hands golden or do they bleed with the wars and conquerings of many hopeless lands, many visceral executions, many lost and wearied souls? Your eyes are green and clear as the sea and it is clear to see that there is a fury that burns bright and a rage against dying light that has taken a hold of you like a child, cradling you against its chest so you may hear the steady beating of a heart that will henceforth carry the burdens of a nation and expect nothing but holy water in return. Are you a god that craves power and fury, or are you the mortal man drinking wine out of a paper cup and pretending you're worth more than what you've got? So the inspiration behind that was I was literally just drinking pomegranate juice one day, and I don't know why, but I was just like, you know what, this is a whole concept and I want to write about it. So again, I just went with it, and yeah. That, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, again, thank you so much for sharing with us and um, your poetry touched me. That's why I wanted to turn off my video and my sound, um, just so I would not interrupt your description and your writing. As a former English teacher, I so appreciate it, but as a person, a connoisseur of poetry as well as art, I'm just, uh, I'm so touched by what you read. And congratulations Thank on you. winning the, the contest. Uh, the Earl Merritt contest, I know is not easy to win. Uh, there's a large high school with lots of people who um, submit poetry. So winning that is definitely a feather in your cap. Well Today done. we are going to be focusing on student work. We have here Tina Mears from Tamanoa Secondary to talk about this awesome art project that they, uh, her and her students have done. So I'm going to turn it over to her at Tamanoa Secondary and I'm just going to stand in the background. Here we go. I'm Tina Mears and I'm a teacher at Tamanoa Secondary. Students of Tamanoa were honored to have an opportunity to do a virtual artist in residency with artist Sandeep Johong. This project evolved over the course of the year during the pandemic, as we really wanted to support our students' mental health during such a difficult time for Tamanwis families. Many students are feeling disconnected from their friends, devastated about the loss of loved ones, the loss of employment, and fear of making our elders sick. 
This isolation has exacerbated the emotional health issues of our students. This project was a way to begin healing and feeling more connected. Sandeep's artist in residency provided our students with a message of hope and resilience. Her work typically centers around the stories of women, stories of resistance and resilience. In order to continue our tradition of annual student-led legacy paintings, she created a piece based on our students' ideas. After her artist talk, I had students create their own beasts of burden based on her recent show at the Burrard Arts Foundation in Vancouver. Students explored their own beasts in their artwork to represent their struggles during the pandemic, gender oppression, mental health, climate change, bullying, or any other issues that they felt deeply impacted by. The results were a powerful collection of very personal work at a very difficult time for our community. Art has the power to heal and to connect us all. So what, right now what we're going to do in a socially distanced way is uh, uh, Tina is going to lead us into Tamatawis. We're going to take a look at the students' art and some of the work that Sandy uh, Johal has done. And, and Jeff is also going to interview uh, Ms. Johal for us later on. And we're going to talk to some of the students. So let's go to Tamatawis. burden here. So Sandeep's work, um, I was lucky enough to take a look at it and then she discussed it with us. She talked about some of her powerful murals. Um, she talked about her facade fest piece uh, in remembrance of Jyoti Singh. Um, so the students created these pieces using circular canvases, acrylic paint, and fabric art and found objects. Each represents a very powerful story and highly personal experience. So I'm gonna let the students tell you a little bit about their work. Um, so basically my work is about how um, students hide their emotions and you put on a face mask, you put on a fake mask, even though uh, you don't show your emotions and behind the mask, you're actually hiding a lot of feelings and how you feel and to everyone you kind of show that that you're happy but actually you're not so in the eyes i tried like making veins and trying to show the anger behind the mask but um on the mask she seems happy yeah. hi my name is josh and my for my painting i decided to do a demon that represents the idea of trying not to be perfect mm -hmm. and i wanted to incorporate more rough textures with my paint strokes to insinuate the idea of not everything in your life has to be perfect because so much pressure is put onto us as students and kids. So that's my thinking. Um, so how did Sandeep's work inspire you? So like I really like how she uses bold colors in her artwork and how she showed her emotions in all her pieces, which um, that's how I wanted to make like bold, use bold colors, and so it popped up. Okay. What would you Josh? Uh, for me, it's more her story because I kind of relate to in the idea of your parents not wanting you to go into a career that's like not related to like medicine. So her story, <laughs> that's really, awesome. her story inspires me because she is doing something that she loves. Cool. Each year, Tamanawis art students create a legacy painting to keep at the school as a graduating gift. Our hall is filled with beautiful pieces done by students in grade 12. This year, unfortunately, we couldn't do that because of the shortened semesters and the hybrid learning model. So Sandeep Johal allowed us to work with her to create a lasting memory.
I wanted to do my Beast and Burden project on the issue of bullying. Since bullying is a problem that affects people all around, all around the world, it has a physical and emotional impact on many people. And this portrait depicts on how it's affecting us in a variety of ways when drawing in monsters. I experimented with various colors and blended them together to create new shades. I drew various monsters to explain different types of bullying and what they are. The pink colors represent anti-bullying. This indicates that the person who is being bullied is too scared to speak up and wants the bullying to stop. The black and pink color scheme highlights the person's negative feelings, for example, self-harm, suicide, and so on. I drew an ugly monster painted in quite bright color to reflect one monster's one monster who feels unconscious and ugly about himself. Since he is afraid of being judged, this monster will begin to despise himself and attempt to separate himself from everyone. The pink moon, on the other hand, is an anti-bullying sign set in pink with yellow and black shadings. For the other monsters drawn, they all reflect different types of bullying. For example, for one monster, I drew a physical bully. I also drew a monster that's picky and teases other people on their appearances. I also drew a monster that is that are always take side with the bullies and cheer them on. The stars, on the other hand, represent importance and self-love, meaning that you should always be happy for who you are and don't change because of people. Change for yourself. The tree represents loneliness that people feel, for example, depression and so on. And that's for my Beast and Burden project. The words that I've changed with the fear of my blood drying out are now wrapped around my throat. Neither a drop of tear, nor the friendship of the past is left in the edges of my eyes, immersed in grudge and anguish. I want to shout my regret, but it's not worth it, because I was the one who burnt that match and put twenty years on fire to inactivate a single moment. Turns out, the remedy to Milan wasn't the ability to forget, but to speak myself to myself. Now it's too late to wish to be human. Even when my conscience has left me, I am worthy of these ashes, not cry. Conscience often reveals what we don't want to see, becomes an interpreter for the hurt and abandoned body under the flawless ceramic layer. Then the human cries, confesses her helplessness, incompleteness, sins only when she realizes that she's dying. She understands and admits that it is not only the cracks and wrinkles that she has plastered, but the heart beneath. Then she hears the voice again, from somewhere deep inside her, but also so far away now. The faint whisper of the being that was once so loud and clear is now merely a silhouette within her evil thoughts of fear. I know you. I'm here for you, says the voice. You're dying. Unless. She knows the meaning of unless. She always did. What about me? How many times have I changed the pigeon in my heart to my desires? How small I've got as I believed I've grown. My heart bleeds even more as I refuse to be injured. By putting a mask on my face, I left my soul without breath. You ask why? Because people die as long as they want to live. Yes, we starve our soul to humanity as much as we seek satisfaction. We run out of hope at the moment we define peace as perfection. Because we know, from somewhere deep inside us, what we are and what we cannot be. And we have denied that we don't need wings to fly that we are as worthless as a stone as we've lost our ability to shed tears to loss, refrained rage from cruelty and sealed the truth of the past. And moreover, we forgot that we are beautiful as long as we appreciate being human. And you, Nalan, you are merely a mode of dust. As long as you believe you are complete, you lack. As much as you want to be the object, you are the shadow. Cry now. Or imagine that you can cry and feel again. Scream your humanity to your ego. Confess your need for your conscience. If you want to run one day, take a step today. 
Because believe me, this road is not as long as you think it is, and you're not alone as you fear you are. And remember, load the beauty of this world to your soul, since your body is doomed to fall. Don't try to forget, rather honor your mind with the things that you want to remember, and think, rather than dreading the mortality, the reason of your existence. Hi, Sandy Pierre. I just wanted to say thank you for trusting me with your feelings and your insights to create this legacy painting for you. It was a very humbling experience. We've all been through a lot this past year, individually and collectively, experiencing unprecedented levels of uncertainty, fear, anxiety, and stress. So I wanted to create something that was really calming and would evoke feelings of ease. So in the outside border of the painting, I've incorporated imagery that connects to this past year, from masks depicting COVID to raised fists depicting all the different protests that have taken place, to an image of the earth, um, thinking about climate sustainability. And then in the center, I have one of my goddesses just evoking this really serene presence, holding a heart and reminding us to take care of ourselves, to take care of each other and, you know, move ahead with hope and resilience and grace. And so I really hope you enjoy this painting. Thank you. So everybody, there you have it. We have some artwork from Tamanois as well as a poetry reading from Earl Marriott. I think it's so great that these students have chosen these art forms to be able to express their their, themselves, their souls. Um, and it's so key to, to express yourself in order to take care of your mental health and wellness and writing um, poetry, writing just regular prose, doing art, um, expressing yourself on paper in those creative ways is definitely a way that you can reduce stress and, and reduce um, some of the anxiety that comes from living and breathing in a global pandemic. So thank you all for watching. Uh, we're so glad as a district to be able to be able to showcase student work. We do this, of course, on the shared traditional territories of the Semiamu, Coast Salish, Kwantlen, and Ketsi First Nations. And we value and honor our indigenous families that are in our district and the territory, which we are so privileged to work, learn, and play on. Have a great day, everybody, if you're watching this um, on whatever day. And just enjoy the summer. I know that it's been a, a, a difficult school year, but you've all pushed through it. Students, staff um, in the district, we're, we're so proud in the district of, of what all of you have been able to accomplish this very difficult COVID-19 pandemic year. We look forward to the summer and look forward to September with all of you. See ya.